<laughs> All right, action. Go, sorry, go. Hello. sorry. <laughs> no, just kidding. I want to congratulate both of you for successfully being the first to ever make me watch a movie and feel like I'm in natural childbirth. The whole time I was like, breathe, Christina. Breathe. breathe. The first you know, three minutes, I'm breathe, calling for an epidural. Um, no, I'm from Houston, so this movie is like super special to my oh, city. Cool. Um, and wow. so I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. Um, oh, right thrilled, thrilled for, to talk with you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So you can ask just about anybody on God's green earth, like who the first person to walk on the moon is, right? It'll say Neil Armstrong. But the story behind it is what nobody knows. I want you guys to kind of set it up and tell, give people a little sneak peek about what this movie's all about. It's as much about family, I think, as it is about uh, space travel. We know very little about Neil and his family. And it's, once you understand what they were experiencing during the course of these missions, the uh, the amount of grief that they were experiencing, the, the personal sacrifice involved in it it, 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 it makes the accomplishment even more extraordinary. Something that was, I think, important to us was was just to remind people that these weren't superheroes. You know that this wasn't, uh, 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 you know, this wasn't myth. This was, this really happened, and it was human beings who did it, and they did it at a time when no one knew for sure if you could land on the moon, if you could walk on the moon. They did it as a sort of you know, literally what we now refer to as a moonshot, you know, it was like literally a gambit uh, of a level that, uh, that uh, humanity has never experienced. And so it was just this kind of unprecedented moment that, it, you know, felt like a real opportunity to tell the human side of that, mm -hmm. show what it meant to the family and to Neil and Janet as they kind of embarked on, you know, uh, one of, you know, mankind's greatest adventures that felt worth telling. These are extraordinary times and we face an extraordinary challenge. And I understand you had a moment in Houston where you went to visit and you said, buckle up, like we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it right. Well, it was, it was, a, it was a wake up call because my first trip to Houston, I just was overwhelmed by, it's just such a dense subject matter. You really wanna get it right because it's, it's important. And, uh, and so, but walking around the halls of uh, NASA at Houston, it was so inspiring, but also kind of terrifying because it was, you know, I was feeling like, and this is a responsibility where this is going to take a lot of work. We've got to all take this seriously and do our research and do our homework because they, they, they're just going to wing it. It's not going to be, it's not going to work. Yeah, well, that's the most challenging part. Like, and for you too, um, for, to be so close to Mark and Rick and say, this is their dad. Mm. You know, to, to so many people in that era, he was a god. And, and that's kind of what you played, but you also played a dad. So that's, I would imagine that would be kind of tough. Um, to make sure you make Mark and Rick proud and, and the other children that were in it that are still here. Yeah, that was the most challenging part of the film was knowing that that uh, Neil and Janet's sons were going to see the film. And like you say, they weren't going to see um, you know, a historical figure. They were going to see their, their parents. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was a lot of pressure, but it was, it was, it was, it was good fuel yeah. you know, to, to keep yeah. uh, working and, and get it right. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. I wonder what it feels like to have a movie made about a, a period in your life and what this movie kind of means to y'all. As we had our very first conversations with, with Damien and with Josh Singer, the screenwriter, um, you know, I think a lot of those conversations started with, you know, tell us about, tell us some stories about when you were younger. and. So we started to tell those stories, and and they would they would sort of delve deeper into them. With our answers were definitely informing their their, their yeah. subsequent questions. So they wanted to know more about about um, what it was really like. And when we were confident, which we became fairly early on, that they wanted to tell the story the way it really happened, um, it just made us want to give them even more information. Yeah, one of my favorite parts in the movie is when you guys are, you know. Your dad's talking about wanting to go to the moon, and y'all just want to go outside and play. <laughs> yeah. You know, was there ever a point that you kind of understood the magnitude of what your dad was doing? Not really. No. no, no certainly not at that yeah. time. No. Um, you know, we we lived in a neighborhood where most of the folks uh, had someone that worked at NASA in various respects, and and we were all sort of in it together. Um, so. Uh, just part of the part of the greater team. You're gonna sit them down, both of them, 
and you're gonna prepare them for the fact that you might not ever come home. You're doing that, not me. You, were you ever, you were, there was never that nervousness of saying like, I may not see my dad again. Yeah. No, not really. We didn't we feel just, it. Uh, it was, I mean, part of it I think is, uh, as a kid, you just think that's not gonna happen to your right. dad. Right. Or anything that does happen, you know, they'll figure it out and they'll come back. And it really isn't until you get much older that you start to realize that, you know, your your belief system at the, at the time was yeah. you know, a bit naive, perhaps. Yeah. Flawed. Uh, flawed. Yeah, I yeah. flawed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think they, I think my mom in particular uh, tried to downplay all that stuff. Yeah. So as kids, we didn't worry about those sort of things. So. How do y'all feel watching it back? I mean, pretty accurate? Very accurate. Yeah. yeah. I, I, at every, at every level. So, I mean, obviously the family uh, aspects of the film were something that we were very involved with, but but um, the technical aspects were wonderful as well. I mean, so they really, the attention, there was attention to detail at every level of this film. Well, well beyond what I ever yeah. expected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Do y'all have a favorite part of the movie? I really like the X-15 sequence, you know, the opening of the film. Yeah. Showing that part of dad's life, uh, I think, was something that we'd hoped would happen, um, and uh, and seeing that that particular fight come to life on the on the big screen is yeah. is, is thrilling. The vehicle's not safe. We need to fail. We need to fail down here so we don't fail up there. At what cost? Well, it's a little bit late for that question, isn't it, sir? I imagine too. Like I'm not an, I'm not an actor, but as doing what I do, I depend on my lines and my questions to kind of get me through. Um, watching Neely seem like a man of few words, but a genius mm -hmm. um, as an <coughs> actor. Is that hard to, to play a, a man so stoic and so genius, but not have a lot of words to be able to use? Dialogue helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you communicate a certain ideas, but in some ways it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's interesting to not have that and then to have to find other ways to communicate it. it it's, it's, it's part of what made him such, so fascinating and um, you know, so worth, uh, even outside of the accomplishment, just as a human being worth the deep dive that the film takes to try and, and better understand him. You're planning on taking some of her jewelry to the moon, Buzz? Sure. What, what fella wouldn't want to give his wife bragging rights? <laughs> Neil, will you take anything? Uh, if I had a choice, I'd take more fuel. Well, Y'all did a great job. Last night I was obviously watching the movie. I was there. Oh, and cool. during it, I was kind of, you know, conducting, like going through the interview in my head. And at one point, I was going to ask you, like, what was it like to be in space? I'm like, Christina, he wasn't in space. Like, but that's that's a huge compliment because <laughs> yeah, you made me feel like, like I was there. Um, I wanted to ask you, I know you have, you've got kiddos too. Um, they grow up, they say, Daddy, I either want to go to space or to, to Hollywood. Where do you send them? <laughs> Either way, they're shooting for the stars. Just saying. <laughs> you can go with that answer. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. Wherever they want, think I on guess. That one. Yeah. You think on that one. Um, so I'm what you call a movie nar narcoleptic. I fall asleep in every movie. Um, so, but with that said, um, so you made me smile when you were smiling. You made me cry when you were crying. Um, you you made me kind of throw up when you were throwing up, but at the end of the day, you made me stay awake, and I loved every minute of it. So job well done. Um, I know as Houston, you guys made us proud. So we just we good, figured if we could job. simulate you know natural childbirth, it would just keep it people, did. It was like, people it was like, eyes glued. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. but that's our secret. <laughs> yeah, very, very good, very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.